Hi readers. I've brought you a story today that I've read two times already this week, but I want to read it a third time because I love it so much. It's called Ruby's Hope and it's by Monica Culling and it's a historical fiction. And that means it's going to tell us some factual things about history, but the authors changed the story a little bit. So it's a work of fiction also. Turn this a little bit. Ruby and her family were slow to leave Oklahoma. I want you to take note of what the ground looks like here in Oklahoma while they're slow to leave. Looks like a dry summer. In 1929, the stock market crashed. Millions lost their savings, their jobs, and their homes. Then came the drought. The ground grew nothing but thistles and dust. Dust buried tractors, killed cattle, and billowed into blizzards that turned day into night. A drought is truly awful. Look at the, the scenery now, it's really changed. Years later, food was getting harder to find. Leaving seemed like the only thing to do. Ruby was seven. Her older brother, Leroy, her sister, Viola, were keen to go, but Ruby didn't want to budge. She loved Big Sky, Oklahoma. The babies, Catherine and Norma, we're quiet on the subject. There's Ruby. She doesn't want to go. You might hear an ad behind me. My smart board just turned off for music and is on an ad right now. Ruby was watering a thistle that grew near her house. She had once had baby chicks, but they had all died. They died during the drought because there wasn't enough food or enough water to water the food that was growing. Don't waste water on that weed, Ruby, said her ma, fighting with the wind to hang a line of wash. Weeds are tougher than we are. Got that right, said Pa, resting on the front steps. Time we're gone. Annie Fogger is staying, said Ruby. Her pa says one day the skies will split open and rain's gonna fall and never stop. That may happen, said Ma, but we won't be here to see it. It's time to go. One morning, Ruby woke to find everyone busy. Pa and Leroy were fixing the car. Ma and Viola were packing up the kitchen. Ruby, mind the babies, said Ma. We're leaving today. So soon, asked Ruby. She felt her stomach drop. It was all happening too fast. The Hudson Super 6 was packed tightly with everything needed to live on the road. A lantern, pots to cook and wash in, a big fry pan, a coffee pot, Plates, cups, spoons, knives, forks, clothes, and tools. Two mattresses held it all down. It was time to hit the road. Ma and the baby sat in the front. Leroy and Viola sat on top. Only Ruby wasn't budging. They're gonna live on the road, kind of like camping, but without a tent. She st was standing still, staring at the farm. Stop your dreaming, Ruby, said Ma. They've got blue skies in California, too. Come on, urged Viola. Ruby wanted to remember every detail of the place she had always called home. When she was ready, Leroy, Leroy and Viola handed Ruby up, hauled Ruby up, excuse me, and the car rumbled on toward Route 66, the route that crossed the country. Look at how they're riding in that car. Of course, we don't see people riding in a car like that now because we know it's not safe. It took two weeks and many flat tires to reach the rich fields of California. Ruby couldn't get over how green everything was. Again, keep an eye on that landscape. It's really different than how Oklahoma was during the drought. Two weeks to reach California by car wouldn't take us that long now. Straight off, the family had found work picking lettuce. When they heard about a pea crop ready for picking outside of a town called Napomo, they pointed the car in that direction. We may run out of gas, said Pa. We'll get to the camp even if we have to drive on fumes or push the truck, said Ma, with a determined look. It sometimes seemed to Ruby that Ma pushed hope to its limits. Can you find the baby who's eating the lettuce? There they are working as a family. Lying on the mattress, Ruby gazed at the drifting clouds. Out of the blue, she said, lettuce makes me sick. They had picked lettuce for over a week. You'll soon be saying the same thing about peas, said Viola. 
Picking anything is tough work, said Leroy. It was especially hard for Ruby, who wasn't very strong, but she tried her best and she was helping and that made her happy. Pa drove the sputtering Hudson onto a dirt road and that's where the gas ran out. The car coasted to a stop just inside the camp. The next morning, Ruby woke to an icy feeling in the air, in her nose and in her mouth. There had been a hard frost overnight and the pea crop was ruined. What'll we do now, Pa? asked Leroy. We'll try and get work in town, said Pa. Then we'll move on. They're moving on to where each job is. It's not always in the same town. It doesn't always last long. In nearby Napomo, Paul and Leroy took any job, even street sweeping. Days passed and food dwindled. Ruby's hope dwindled too. When I read this to students, we talked about that word dwindled. It means the food is running out and her hope is running out too. But not Ma's hope. Every day she cooked a little bit extra so the kids who crowded around the campfire might get a bite or two. Ma is hopeful that things are all going to work out. Ruby was the first to see the car and the woman with the black box. My name's Dorothea, she said, shaking Ruby's small hand. This is my camera. What's your name? Ruby. How long have you been in this camp, Ruby? asked Dorothea. Ruby didn't often talk to strangers, but this lady seemed kind and eager to listen. Ruby told the photographer about leaving the farm where the trees, the garden, and the animals had all died. Now the peas are dead too. Our food is running out and we have no money for gas. Don't lose hope, Ruby, said Dorothea. When I was your age, I got a disease that left me with a twisted foot. I thought I'd never walk again, but here I am. Ruby had noticed the limp. I hear the ad behind me again. Why are you carrying a camera? The government hired me to take photographs of migrant farm workers. Suddenly, Ruby had an idea. Would you like to take my mama's picture? Dorothea wanted to, so Ruby led her toward the family's lean-to. They skirted along an icy pond. The photographer walked slowly, but Ruby ran ahead. We also talked about the words migrant farm workers when we read this book, and it means that the farm workers are moving from farm to farm as they, they're kind of migrating through the work that needs to be done. Like some animals migrate to where uh, the warmer temperatures are. Migrant farm workers move to where the work is. Ma, this lady wants to take our picture. Dorothea Ling introduced herself. She told Ma about the government program that gave photographers like herself work recording the damage done to farmers by the Great Depression. May I take your picture? People will who see it will realize how hard life is for migrant workers. Ma gave the stranger a long, hard look. Her clothes weren't new, but neither were they dirty or torn, and her voice sounded like a big city. But the photographer's eyes were kind, so Ma agreed. Take your pictures, but I don't see what good they'll do. We need gas to leave this place. We need food, not photographs. Here comes a really cool part of the book. Dorothea worked slowly and carefully. She put Ma at ease by talking about her own children, whom she hadn't seen in a month, all while inching closer. Dorothea Lang took six pictures, one after the other, and then got back into her car. This is the most famous of the six pictures and is called Migrant Mother. Take a look, here's Dorothea with her camera. Cameras were different back in the 1920s and 30s, and it took a long time to take six pictures. And here is Ruby's mama with, so it's, she's got three kids in all in this picture. So maybe one is Ruby and maybe one, maybe the others are the twins or another baby. When the photograph of the mother and the three of her children made the newspapers, people opened their hearts Again, Ruby was the first to spot the trucks the day they rolled into the camp. They brought 20,000 pounds of food and something even more precious, hope. There they are. That is the end of the fictional story, but what's cool is back here, here's another one of the pictures that Dorothea Lang took, it's in the sunshine. And a little bit of information about the migrant family and 
the real story goes that Ruby's family, once Dorothea Lang left, um, and before the trucks came in, Ruby's family actually left the camp. So they weren't there when the trucks came in with the food, but the hope is that they, they found their next best place to be and all of the things that they needed. I really love this story and I hope you enjoyed it. It was a long story. So I hope that you enjoyed it and that you come back to hear a story another day.